Now that we've learned the four different methods for solving a quadratic equation, we can use those equations to model real life problems. In section 2.3, we'll consider applications of quadratic equations. In this section, we're looking at different ways to use a quadratic equation to solve real life problems. We're gonna examine several different geometry problems and these are divided into subsections. In 2.3.1, we will examine problems using the Pythagorean theorem. This is probably a very familiar formula to you and it's also related to quadratic equations. In a right triangle, now remember a right triangle is a triangle that contains one right angle, or an angle that measures 90 degrees. The sum of the squares of the lengths of the legs, now in a right triangle, the legs are the segments that frame that right angle. This is equal to the square of the length of the hypotenuse. So the hypotenuse is this side, which is opposite the right angle. We generally name the legs A and B, and we call the hypotenuse C. Those values represent the lengths of each of those segments. The Pythagorean theorem stated in English up there is written very concisely in the language of math. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. That is, the sum of the squares of the lengths of the legs is equal to the square of the hypotenuse. This relationship holds true for any right triangle. If the triangle is not a right triangle, then the Pythagorean theorem does not apply. Let's use this as our governing equation as we solve example one. Example one, one of the legs of a right triangle is twice as long as the other leg. If the hypotenuse is 15 inches, how long are the legs of the triangle to the nearest tenth of an inch? So to understand this problem, let's draw a picture. We've got a right triangle and one of the legs is twice as long as the other leg. So it doesn't matter if you make your vertical segment longer or your horizontal segment longer. Um, we will model this correctly with our variables. So I've got my right triangle. One leg is twice as long as the other leg. So I'm going to suppose that X is the length of the shorter leg. So I will label that on the triangle here as X. Well, if that length is X, and I know the other leg, that vertical segment, is twice as long as that one, we could say the length of the vertical segment then is 2X, or 2 times X. We're also told that the hypotenuse is 15 inches. So that's important information. I'm going to include that on my graph. Remember, the hypotenuse is the segment opposite the right angle. Now, the question that we're attempting to answer here is how long are the legs of the triangle? And then I'm going to round to the nearest tenth of an inch. How long are the legs? So I need to find the length of the horizontal and vertical segment. And here's where we're going to apply Pythagorean theorem. One thing that's important as you're modeling these problems with Pythagorean theorem is to remember that the legs are on one side of the equation and it is the hypotenuse that's always by itself. So make sure you get those in the right order. So applying the Pythagorean theorem, we're gonna add the sum of the squares of the legs. So we have x squared plus, now the other leg has length 2x, and we're gonna square that, and set it equal to the square of the hypotenuse. Again, the legs are always on one side of the equation. The hypotenuse is the one that's by itself. Notice the parentheses around the 2x. That's going to ensure that I square both of those factors. So let's go ahead and square those factors. 2 squared is 4, and x squared is x squared. And 15 squared, if you evaluate that on your calculator, would give you 225. What I want you to observe here is we have an equation in one variable, and specifically, it's a quadratic equation. We know it's quadratic because it has that x squared term. Now, if I simplify this a little bit further, I notice I've got a quadratic term 
and no linear or x term. By the way, when you're solving the word problems, you can choose any of the four methods that are appropriate for that particular equation. So if your favorite method is quadratic formula, you can use that to solve the equation. But do notice on this one, it would be convenient to use the square root property. The reason for that is because I can easily isolate that x squared term. And when I do that, I end up with simply a constant. So 225 divided by 5 gives us 45. Remember in the square root method, once you have your quadratic part isolated, then you can simply take the square root of both sides, remembering the plus or minus. So the square root of x squared is x. Let's think of 45 as 9 times 5. And then we could split that up into the square root of 9, square root of 5, and we get plus or minus 3 square root of 5. So we've solved our quadratic equation, and we came up with two answers. But remember, x represents the length of the side of a triangle. It doesn't make sense for that length to be negative. So one of our answers does not apply to the situation. So we're only going to keep the answer x equals positive 3 square root of 5, because only a positive number makes sense for a distance. So we're going to continue. We're going to keep this value 3 square root of 5. Remember, x was measured in inches. So the length of the shorter side is 3 square root of 5 inches. Now, that doesn't make a lot of sense to us. So we might want to approximate that value so we have a better understanding of how long is that side. So with my calculator, I'm going to evaluate. 3 square root of 5. And remember, in the instructions for the problem, it told us to round to the nearest tenth. That's one decimal place. So we can approximate this at 6.7. So I'm going to use the squiggly equal to to indicate approximately. That means I've rounded it. 6.7 inches. So we've got two answers here. And just to help you understand the terminology, this is what we call an exact answer. And this one is an approximate answer. 6.7 probably makes a little more sense to your mind as far as understanding how long that, that is. Now, we were supposed to find the length of both legs. If the shorter leg is 6.7 and the longer leg is modeled by 2x, then when I multiply 6.7 by 2, I'll figure out the length of the longer leg. 2 times 6.7 is 13.4 inches. So we've got the length of both legs. For good measure, let's respond to the question posed with a complete sentence. We can say the length of the shorter leg is 6.7 inches and the longer leg is 13.4 inches long. And that answers both of those questions. Now, a quick way to check this to make sure that I got it right, I should be able to apply Pythagorean theorem using the values that I ended up with and get an equality, or at least an approximate equality since we've rounded our numbers. So I'm going to find the sum of the squares of the lengths of the legs. That's 6.7 squared plus 13.4 squared. And then I'm going to find the square root of the result. Whoops, back out of that. Second square root, 224.45. We should see approximately 15. Now, the reason it doesn't come out to be exactly 15 is because we've rounded our numbers and approximated them. If we were using the exact expressions, 3 square root of 5 and double that to get 6 square root of 5, and plug those into the Pythagorean theorem, we would get an exact equality here. But we can see with our rounded values, 6.7 and 13.4, those satisfy the Pythagorean theorem, giving us the value, or at least approximately the value of the length of the hypotenuse. So we can verify our solution. So the governing formula uh, problem <clears throat> was the Pythagorean theorem. But that led us to a quadratic equation, which we were able to solve by the square root method. Let's try another example using Pythagorean theorem. Example 2. A handicap ramp 8 feet in length has a vertical rise of 1.5 feet. 
calculate the horizontal run of the ramp to the nearest inch. To meet ADA compliance, a ramp must have a 1 to 12 ratio of rise to run. Does this ramp meet ADA compliance standards? If not, what changes would make it ADA compliant? Okay, let's draw a picture so we understand. Think about entrances to buildings, specifically at Emerald College. We have handicap ramps where a person in a wheelchair can still access the building that has a particular rise. So in this case, we have a ramp that is eight feet in length. It has a vertical rise. That means the, the vertical coverage of that ramp is 1.5 feet. We are to calculate the horizontal run of this ramp to the nearest inch. Notice whenever we construct a picture of the ramp, we can see a right triangle there. Therefore, this, the sides of this right triangle should satisfy the Pythagorean theorem. So let's suppose that X is the length of the run. And by the way, run just means horizontal segment. Rise means vertical segment. So we're going to set this up similarly to what we did on example one, applying Pythagorean theorem. Remember, we're going to take the sum of the squares of the legs and set that equal to the square of the hypotenuse. So our model for this problem would look like x squared plus 1.5 squared equals 8 squared. Notice we have a quadratic equation in one variable. We have four different methods that we could use to solve this problem, and we're going to choose the most convenient method. In this case, the square root property will work beautifully because we can isolate that x squared term and end up just taking the square root of both sides. So evaluating 1.5 squared on your calculator, you'd discover 2.25 and by the way, to square something, a quick and easy shortcut is to use your x squared button over here on the left side. 2.25 is the value, and 8 squared is 64. So let's solve for x squared by subtracting 2.25 from both sides. That isolates the x squared on the left. I'm going to use my calculator, 64 minus 2.25 gives us 61.75. Now, looking at this equation, can you anticipate the next step? Do you know what to do? Hopefully you recognize, take the square root of both sides, including the plus or minus. The square root of x squared is x, and let's approximate the square root of 61.75 with our calculator. So I'm gonna do second, and then the square root 61.75, and we get approximately 7.9. Now, in the problem, it told us round to the nearest tenth. The tenth place is the first decimal place. So this one rounds to 7.9. So x, and I'm going to do my approximately equal to <clears throat> over here, is 7.9. Now notice I'm only going to recognize the positive square root because, again, we're using x to represent a length, and a negative length does not make sense. So we'll use only the positive result, 7.9. Also, we, we need to include units with our answer. We were measuring length in feet. So the length of the horizontal run is approximately 7.9 feet. So let's answer that question first. The length of the horizontal run is about... 7.9 feet. So that answers the first question, but there's a little bit more to the problem. Back up here, it says to meet ADA compliance, the ramp must have a 1 to 12 ratio of rise to run. Now, when you hear rise and run, you're probably thinking about slope, and you would be right. So the slope, M, is a ratio of rise to to run. Rise over run gives me the slope of that line. Now, if the ratio is described as 1 to 12, then we could say 1 is the rise and the run is 12. 
Now, what I want to do is approximate that with my calculator. I'm going to type in 1 divided by 12, and that gives me the decimal value 0 0.083. So I'm going to approximate this 0 0.083. So the ratio of rise to run, the threshold to meet ADA compliance, it cannot be larger or steeper than 0.083. If the ramp is too steep, then it's inaccessible. So let's figure out the slope or the ratio of rise to run to our problem. So for our particular problem, M, the rise is 1.5, and we calculated the run to be 7.9. Let's figure out what approximate value that is. So we'll divide with our calculator. 1.5 divided by 7.9, and that gives us about 0 0.190. So this is approximately 0 0.190. If I compare this to the standard for uh, ADA, compliance. This one is too steep, right? The slope is bigger. That means it's difficult to go up that ramp in a wheelchair. So our particular ramp is not ADA compliant. So let's make a note of that. The given ramp is not ADA compliant. It is too steep. So how can we fix it? What changes should we make? Well, we still have to cover the same rise to access the building, so that's fixed. We can't change that. But if we lengthen the ramp and also lengthen the horizontal run, then notice the slope of this hypotenuse is a little bit less. So to make this ADA compliant, we can lengthen the ramp and the run to make it ADA compliant. And we could calculate exactly what we would need to do in order for the slope to have that ratio 1 to 12. Now, if you think about um, specifically at Amarillo College on campus, if you're entering a building, and it's got quite a bit of rise to cover, instead of having a really long ramp, what they do is break the ramp in half and sort of make it switch back up into the building. So they can have a ramp that's not too steep, but still have cover quite a bit of run. All right, I hope this was helpful in solving equations that model the Pythagorean theorem. In the next video, we'll look at some different applications of quadratic equations.